Well, hi everybody. This is Angelo Quinones and Yuri Shine Ministries. I Ministries is Jijain to give you dependable and accurate answers that come straight from God's holy and inspired word, the Bible. And you're not getting dependable and accurate answers either from the Watchtower Society or the Mormon Church or any other sect sect of cult. You know what I'm saying? You're not you're not getting it. You're not getting you're not getting dependable and accurate answers. We'll get into that in a second, okay? Verse 25 of Isaiah chapter 40 says something like this, quote, To whom then will you liken me or compare me, says another translation, that I would be his equal, says the Holy One, meaning the Holy One of Israel. Let me repeat that. It's quite clear. It's not equal to God. So then will you liken me that I would be his equal, says the Holy One. Now, his is not in the text. It could mean either he, she, it. It doesn't make a difference. You know what I mean? Now, that's not the prime directive, but I wanted to start with that because it was just there, okay? It was just there because I, I was using it, okay, all right, uh, to defeat and to reach or to reach, because it could be one or the other. Jesus did both. Jesus did both. You understand what I mean? He did. Let me make sure that uh, this is bright for you guys, okay? I just want to make sure, and it's not really all the way there, so let me just put it all the way like this, okay? All right, fine. Now, um, let's go to the same app, basically. Let's go to Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7, okay? And then we're going to touch upon uh, Mark chapter 16, verse 12, that's not even in the best and earliest uh, Greek manuscripts, and Mark agrees by his independent study. Let's go to Philippians chapter 2, like I said before. Philippians chapter 2. Okay, all right. And let's start really with verse 5, because verse 5 is really the key to understand why even he wrote under inspiration uh, verses 6 and 7. Okay, so verse 5 is, is key. Let's start with that. Have this, <clears throat> have this attitude in yourselves which was also in Christ Jesus. Hell, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God. Does it say period over there? Mark from Missouri put a period there. Let's read the whole thing again, but let's, let's, let's stick in a period where Mark put a period. Because he thinks we're stupid just like they are at the tower. You know what I, you know what I mean? The Watchtower. Bible Track Society. Well, now Mark is a JW. I love Mark a lot. He's a buddy in the pal. But all in fair and love is in war. You understand what I mean? Verse 6 says something like this again. Who, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped. Verse 7. But emptied himself, taking the form of a bond servant or a slave, and being made in the likeness of men. Okay, let's stop right there. It doesn't say that he was made in the likeness of God. It doesn't say that he's a creature. It doesn't say who being in the form of uh, of Michael. It doesn't say he was in the form of, of uh, Angel, uh, it would be Angelou in a genitive because uh, there was in a genitive also, you know, as it would be in a genitive case construction. Let's read it the way Mark from Missouri read it to me over the phone or over the, you know, messenger. Who, although he exists, is really subsisting. It's not an aorist over there. It's, just, it's, just a, it's a present active participle. Okay, if you see, and, and we're going to see that. Who, although he existed in the form of God, comma, did not regard equality with God, period? Doesn't have that there. It doesn't have it. He's being dishonest. He's being untrue. 
Mark for Missouri. He put a period after the word God. Did not regard equality with God, period. It doesn't say that, though. It doesn't. Jehovah's Witnesses have to witch and squeal. They have to change the texts. Equality with God, a thing to be held on to or to grasp. Now, let's, took a, let's take a look at two scenarios. But let me start with the negative first because that's the royal way to, in, to interpret a passage to understand what the passage does not say. What, does, what, what it does not mean. <clears throat> Excuse me, that is the royal method, always. So let's look at the passage, what doesn't it, what, what is not saying, okay? It is not saying, okay, that, and this is Mark from Missouri's uh, teaching on this, okay? And he may deny it, but I have it on, on, on digital uh, recordings. He says something like this, very unlike what I'm teaching. Well, I'm teaching from the Bible. He's teaching from pam pamphlets and magazines and Watchtower tradition. I'm teaching from the Bible. He's, he's teaching from, you know, like I said before, tradition is like filler on a roof. It's like tradition. I mean, that's what it is. It's almost like the Catholic Church. Well, it doesn't mean this. It doesn't say um, something like this. Go out. Who, although he existed in the form of God, did not think to be equal with God. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say that he didn't consider equality with God a thing to be attained. It doesn't say that he didn't think of doing the same thing Satan did. In other words, that's why. That, 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 that. Listen, when we had a debate and campaign, that's why he. That's why he brought the example of Satan. Okay. I will be like the Most High, says Satan. Right. Isaiah chapter fourteen. And otherwise, Jehovah's Witnesses, they change this just like they change everything. And they insert the word other, you know, two times in verse 16 and verse 17 of, 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 of Colossians chapter 1. Okay, he, he, he created all other things. It doesn't say all other things. It just says, other, you know, all things. But they put the word other there. Instead of union with Christ, instead of, um, you know, um, in Christ, is union with Christ. In union. You understand know what I mean? <clears throat> it said, uh, you know, and the word was God. The word was a God. You see how they change everything around? It said, uh, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. God is your throne. You see how they change everything around? And they accept us, they ex expect us to swallow that vomit that has been vomited by their pops and daddy for a couple of hundred years. I think they expect us to, you know, to, to buy into that garbage stuff. Just like nobody was going to go to the moon and 24, around 24 people did. I mean, you got Mark from Missouri, you know, praising the Mars uh, uh, rover. But his tower said that nobody was going to even break the envelope of the atmosphere, of Earth's atmosphere. But then he's looking at the drone and all this other. He has a drone of, on his, uh, of his own. Can't have, you, can't have your cake and eat it, too. You can't say that, oh, I trust the tower, and they've been wrong every stinking time. Sold magic wheat and corn to their own people. Said that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were going to return, and they never did. Huh? That's, that's, what, that's what we're dealing with here. We're dealing with frauds. Let's just face it, though. Mark from Missouri is a fraud. That's what he is. It doesn't matter if I love him or lies, if he's a buddy in a power, if he's a friend, or not, it, 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 that doesn't make a difference. When you're a killer, you're a killer. I'm not saying that he's a murderer like that, but he doesn't love Christ, and he's a leading people to hell. 
you know, that's just it. Let's continue with this, though. <clears throat> now, this is my approach to it, which is a biblical approach. I mean, you can't really, I mean, you can. I was going to say, you can't really, you know, blame Jehovah's Witnesses for being stupid, though. I mean, you know. Because their 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 former president only went to the seventh grade. I mean, you know, I mean, at least he made it five grades higher than than Joseph Smith, the Mormon uh, 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 founder. Well, he went to the second grade. Oh, Charles Chase Russell did a lot better than he did. He went to the seventh grade. I mean, so the both of them, the the founder of the Watchtower. Charles Chase Russell, and uh, you know who, who was a, who was a clothes salesman, guys. I mean, come on, man. I mean, he sold clothes for a living. I mean, that's what he did. I mean, he he set up his cleaners. I mean, come on, washing his drawers. I mean, come on, man. And then he gets into that Bible without any training. Even the disciples didn't do that. I mean, they were in the school of Christ for three and a half years. And then Mark says, oh, they made a lot of mistakes. And, you know, they made about, well, at least they were in school. Make the mistakes in school and not at the day, at the day of Pentecost. You know what I'm saying? That's what I want. All right. Are you making the, make the mistakes and, you know, and that's Mark right there. Make the mistakes. I think so. Anyway, make the mistakes, okay, in the, in the hard knocks of uh, the school of Christ. Don't make them outside. Don't make them, you know, in, in, in Mars Hill, even though he wasn't there, the Apostle Paul, though, but... I mean, don't don't make up at the the day of Pentecost. Don't don't don't. That's the first key. Don't you don't use the the second key and make a mistake. Okay, all right. Uh, to the Gentiles at chapter ten or chapter eleven of, uh, in chapter ten and chapter eleven of uh, of Paraxis Apostolonia Acts of the Apostles. Like, you understand what I mean? Make the mistakes while you were you know with with, with Christ. Don't make them you know when you finish you know college. I mean, they were instructed for three and a half years. I mean, these guys have no no biblical training at all. I mean, you see the Apostle John telling you Hebrew, telling you Greek. You see? Jesus even saying the difference between, you know, uh, 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 like like um, was and, and, and is, the, the, the past form and the sort of present form. I mean, you know. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. You know, you know. It's, he doesn't say, you know, I was the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He said, I am. You see? Teaching them Greek. Teaching them a little Hebrew. Or whatever the case was. You understand what I mean? Yeah, right. I mean, you just, just, you know. Who, although he existed in the firm of God. That's what it says. So he was God. God. Capital G God, by the way. Capital G God. Did not regard, did not consider, did not even think. Equality with God, a thing to be held on to. Let's look at that with God. In order to do that, I want to teach you, son. I want to teach you about the dative case. And just, just think about that with God, right? Right in your mind, all right? Let's get this app. Let's throw away the training wheels. You following Mark with me? Just get rid of the training wheels, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna put you in the pool. I mean, I mean, let me forget about the you know Greek interlinear. Forget about that. Let's 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 test Mark from Missouri out. You know what I'm saying? Let's check it out right over here. Book of Philippians, chapter 2. Let's check it out. Let's see if he can read it. He said he can read it, right? Just like Russell said, he can read. Mm. Let's put the print a little higher, though. A little, uh, you know, the font a little bit more stronger. A little stronger size. Bigger size, I should say. Okay, so let's see right here. Eh... That's all right, right there. That's cool. That's really big. <laughs> you have to do it that big, though. Okay, so uh, let's go to uh, verse 6, the royal passage, the prime directive. Well, let's start with this, though. It says, Tuta, tuta gar franete. It says over here, okay. Okay. 
And uh, this, yeah, this, let's start with verse 5 because this is really the key to understand the passage. It says, Tuta, which is a demonstrative pronoun. Okay? It's from the Hutas paradigm. Now, Tuta is, is a actual, it's a singular, because of the Omicron that's telling me, that it's a singular neuter uh, construction. And it says gar over here. And then it says franesto. franesto. And then the Greek preposition n. It looks like an ev, but it's not an ev. It's an en. And then humin is in the dative case. Okay. Uh, in in so, so the preposition n is taking the dative humin here. Spelled out upsilon with a rub rating. So it's hu and not, you know, u. And then uh, mu, mu, or mi. And then you have Yoda with the circumflex and then uh, Nu. It looks like a V again, but it's not a V. It's an N in Greek. So if you're looking at something that looks like a V in Greek, there ain't no V um, in Biblical uh, Greek. Biblical Greek. Who mean? Your, um, it says over here, uh, in yourselves. And then it says, ha kai en. A uh, Cristo, Yesu. Now, Cristo is in a dative case because the Iora subscript is giving that away. And there's an Omega over there that swallowed up the Omicron, right? And then you have a Yoda subscript and a circumflex overhead. That's in a dative case. And Yesu is also in a dative case, even though that shares the same construction with the genitive case construction. This is, this is, this is all dative here. In Christ Jesus. Hash for who? That's a relative pronoun, Has. Spelled out Omicron with a rough breathing with a grab marker and, and the final sigma, Has, which means who or he. Who and then in form. In Morphe, or the modern Greeks will pronounce this Morphe. Morphe. You see? And it's a preposition, one of 17 small prepositions like ek and, you know, uh, uh, kata and meta, apa, you know, ana, anti, pras, pra. I mean, you got a host of small prepositions. And this is a prepositional phrase over here. And marfe. Now, you don't need and the form. Remember that prepositional phrases don't need articles. You have to understand that. Just like in the beginning, well, you don't have a the there in the prepositional phrase for uh, in uh, beginning in John 1.1. 1, 1. Everybody translates that, you know, in the beginning. Okay? Because RK or, or RK is definite by nature. There are 10 different ways that a noun, a Greek noun, can be, okay, all right, definite without having an article. And this is one of the ways. And Marfe doesn't need in uh, the form. It doesn't need that there. Okay? Just letting you know that. Prepositional phrases don't need articles. Just like predicate uh, adjectives don't need uh, articles. Some, uh, you know, numbers don't need articles. Uh, names don't need articles. You know, you can have Jesus without having the, uh, without having the ha. Okay. That's just a fact. And Marfe, in form. Just like it says in Rome. In verse 7 of chapter 1 of Romans, that doesn't have an article. It doesn't say in the Rome, but everybody know that is the Rome of Romes. But that doesn't have an article. So that's easy to deal with, just in case somebody might bring it up from the tower that's not really educated on prepositional phrases. Okay? Well, it says over here, have this mindset in you. Okay? In you, in who mean that also in the Greek word kai K 
can be translated into also there. Hello. Can be translated into also there also. Okay. Uh, and it says uh, in uh, Cristo, in Cristo Jesus, in Christ Jesus. So the has there is referring back to the antecedent and Jesus over here in verse 5. So we all know, there's no guessing game, who is the next, um, you know, uh, what is the next clause referring to. Verse, the clause in verse 6, the first clause in verse 6 is referring back, okay, all right, to the word Jesus. So that's the antecedent. Remember that um, a... Antecedent is the ancestor of a pronoun. So you have the pronoun has here, which is a relative uh, masculine singular pronoun. So it's matching masculine and singular. It does not need to match the case. Remember that, you know, it is behaving outside of that. Within, within the clause, I should say. Within the clause. The word Jesus and Christ is in a date of case. You understand what I mean? So it doesn't have to match the date of case. Because has is in its own clause. Okay? And it's, it's, it's the subject of that clause. You understand? There is no guessing game. Who, what is the antecedent of has here? Christ Jesus. And then the who refers back to, to Jesus here. Has and marfe te uhu parkon. Has means he, and means in here, and then Marfe is in the date of case. You, you see the little tiny, um, in Marfe, the Eta, that looks like an N, it's not an N, it's an actual E class in, in, uh, in uh, Biblical uh, Greek. There's a little tiny I underneath that letter. We, are, we already saw there's a little tiny I underneath the Omega in the word for Christ, Christo. That's just telling you that this is in the date of case. Okay, and so we know that in the dative, n takes the dative case. The preposition n will take the dative, just like n is taking the dative in in the phrase in the prepositional phrase in Cristo, in Cristo Jesus, huh? Make yeah, go ahead, make Jesus cry. That's my stepdaughter. So it says over here, Hars and Marfe, and then after that you have the u. Okay, you have to, ooh, meaning is modifying, okay, all right, Marfe. Marfe is the idea presented by the Apostle Paul that Jesus was in some kind of a form, but you need, you need the description of that form. What kind of form was Jesus in? Or actually, it's going to tell you that he is not only that he was in the form of God, at the present time of the Apostle Paul's writing of this of, of this of scripture, he is God, who being very nature God, it says even in the NIV. And Marfe Theu Huparkon. Theu, let's start with Theu. It's capitalized here, very nicely so. Spelled out Theta Epsilon Omicron, nowadays called Omicron, and Upsilon, nowadays called Epsilon. What is the circumflex? Theu is one of the nine constructions that I know of, and there are feminine constructions of the word uh, 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 for God, goddess. You have two different constructions, Thea and Theon, with an alpha, in uh, chapter 19 of the Acts of the Apostles, when it talks about the goddess Diana, or Artemis, or whatever you want to call her, you know, or it. So there is a feminine side of the paradigm for the word God. This is in the masculine side of the paradigm, and this is the second one in the singular part of the paradigm, Theu. You know the paradigm, and let me, and just in case you don't know the paradigm, I have one made up, so it's kind of it's kind of nice to, to have this. I drew it up for you guys because I didn't see one on uh, on YouTube anywhere. So I think it's this one. Is it this notepad or is it the other notepad though? No, it must be the other other notepad. It might be this notepad. It has to be this one, right? Let me get Mark's thing out of the way here over there. I hope I still got it though. Let me see. I don't know. I hope it didn't race. So I don't see anything there. 
Maybe that's not it. Maybe it's the other one. Maybe it's the other one. Let me see if I can get it here. Sorry about that, guys. I didn't really have it keyed up because I wasn't gonna. I wasn't even thinking of using the 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 Theos, the Theos paradigm here. So I think it should be this, right? No. So that's the alphabet, though. That's that's, that's Hebrew. But where is my other notepad? Well, probably one of the kids. They probably you know that's Hebrew though, and. Uh, I don't see my notepad here. Yeah, sorry about the music in the background, you know. Um, I don't see my I don't see my notepad anywhere here. And probably some of the kids uh, used the uh, one of the kids used the phone and then they moved, they moved it. Or maybe I moved it to uh, to a spot close to the phone. But anyway. Um, <coughs> I don't want to go to the internet because probably um, it's going to conk out. But anyway, I'll just describe for you verbally uh, what it'll look like, the, the, the paradigm, you know, because I can't get it now for you guys. So um, let me just say it like this. The paradigm will go something like this, okay? Te as, te u, te o. And te o is, is here in the text. Actually, so two forms for the word God appears in verse 6. You got te u and you got te o. You got te u in a genitive and you got te o in a dative. And uh, they ask, everybody really knows, um, you know, at least they think so, <laughs> okay. So, uh, they ask, they o, uh, they o, and they on, everybody uh, knows that construction. Uh, uh, and we see the two different constructions. So, we can, we can check out the whole paradigm, actually, except for they own, it's not in the, it's not in the Greek New Testament. They own of the gods, it's not, it's not a genitive plural, that word for God. Um, they always is probably there alongside of uh, they us. Um, or Theoi in chapter 10 of John when it talks about gods. Theon is in uh, Daniel, uh, I believe, Daniel chapter Daniel chapter 2 or chapter 4, verse 47. We could check that out. So let's try to look at the, the, the Theos paradigm on our own without my chart, unfortunately. So we have Theu over here, right here. Okay, let me uh, see if I can poke the bear, and I can't. So Te'u is here, and that's, a, that's, a, that's the genitive, singular, masculine construction for the word God. Now Te'o will be, I think the last in writers over here, will be Data uh, Epsilon Omega with the Yoda subscript. Okay, that's called an improper diphthong, the I underneath a, a vowel. It can only happen under three letters, this Omega, Alpha, and Eta. And we saw Eta already in the, in the Greek word Marfe. That's an improper diphthong. Diphthong is a combination of two vowels making a uh, one sound okay but this is an improper diphthong okay <clears throat> so you have two constructions there for for god let's check out two more in john 1 1 so that's kind of easy to to see so let's uh, go to john 1 1 okay kata yoanin right over here and let's poke the bear over here and you're going to see it right away it says over here energy ain ha lagas kai ha Lagos and prastan veyan. So that's the accusative um, version of the word for God. The accusative case is the case of limitation. The extent of the hearing. It's not that they didn't understand the, uh, the voice. They didn't, uh, they didn't, uh, they didn't uh, hear the voice. They didn't understand the voice, rather. Okay, so the, the accusative case is the case of limitation. As the extent. The genitive case, like in the word teu, like we saw... That's uh, limiting as to kind, what kind of a God, okay? Or what, you know, like that. Or what kind of a form, okay, that was. And that's limiting uh, that the only form that's, that, that Paul is talking about is the form of God. Let's say it like that, okay? So Theon is another one in the, in the singular, okay, and... Um, and that's an accusative. But let's get um, the nominative form of... Uh, it's not the noun of the... It's not the, it's not the subject of the sentence. But nevertheless, that's one of the constructions that we're looking for. So let's look at theas. So, chi theas. See theas over there. It's right alongside of the... Um, to the right-hand side of chi. And God was 
the word, or the word was, or the word was God. That's a predicate uh, adjective. It doesn't need an article because it's a predicate. It's a predicate um, adjective, okay, and that's in the predicate position. So by nature, it's already definite. It doesn't need an article. That's just 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 one of the rules. Okay. It's right before an amy word, ain. When that happens, you know you're dealing with, okay, you're probably most likely dealing with a predicate adjective, okay? There's different kinds of adjectives in Greek. A predicate adjective, a sustentable adjective, attributive adjective, like that. So you already saw the paradigm, except for the word at the A, and I think you can see that either in um, Matthew chapter 27, um, it's crucifixion chapter there, or you can see it maybe in Mark's gospel chapter 15, okay? You can see the E there, and that's evocative, the E. And in the plural, um, I, I told you that you can see those in uh, John chapter 10, probably two, two of three, or two of four, or three of four, and then Theon, if you go to uh, Daniel, and I'll need another app for that, okay, you can see Theon there, because that's not in the, in the Greek New Testament. So you're going to have to go all the way to uh, Daniel. Oh, no, you don't have to go to Daniel. I mean, it, it's peppered all throughout the, the, the Greek Septuagint, okay? So um, that's not the Septuagint, that's the Hebrew, so you're not going to see it there. So let me get to, to the Septuagint. And I think it's in chapter 2, verse 47, if I'm not mistaken. So let's go to Daniel, okay? And if you're interested in getting a copy of the Septuagint, an actual tangible hard copy of a not and not an app, well, you can get one on Amazon.com. You can get um, the the Greek Septuagint of 1851, and um, you can get that you can get that easily. It has like a sort of like a cross on the front or whatever it is, the symbol it is. So, um, <clears throat> okay, so uh, let's check that Isaiah, Lamentations, Hosea, and Daniel's right over here. And I guess it's in chapter 2, verse 47, but I'm just, I'm just guessing because I haven't seen it in a while. So hopefully it's there for you guys, okay? Hopefully it's there. Um, I don't know why I, I hit it in. It's supposed to be there. If it's not there, Jerome has it. Tell him to bring it back or get it from him. It's, yeah. I told him that to leave it there, and it looks like he didn't leave it there. Yeah. You see? Okay, okay, good. He left it there. Okay, good. So, let's check this out. It says in verse 47, it says over here, Kai ekphonesas. Aha Basileus kingdom over there, pras tan Daniel, Daniel, capital delta there, apen, and Daniel said uh, to, uh, to Daniel, it says, ep um, ale theas, ale theas is true, essence is, ha theas, God, uh, humon, um, and then it says over here, te as ton te on. You see, ton te on is right there. He's the God of gods. Meaning the God of Daniel, he's talking to Daniel, is the God of gods. Process, you know, the God of gods. See, te on, but te on is not in the Greek New Testament. So I'm just letting you know. As a matter of fact, let me just take a picture of this. So that way it saved me the trouble of looking for it. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? Let's take, the, take a picture of this. So let's take a picture of this. And if you're interested in Theon, well, there it is. I mean, it's probably, uh, I don't know how many times is, is in, 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 uh, in a Greek Septuagint, but that's just one of the times, okay? But you're not going to find that construction, Theon, the genitive plural, uh, masculine. Um, you're not going to find that in, in the Greek New Testament. And, of course, if you see a, a chart by, by um, Murray J. Harris in his book entitled Jesus is God, brilliant book, um, it looks at all the verses that Jesus is called God, and it, it gives you a different uh, size to, of, of the story. And then, um, you know, he gets into um, a, a chart 
and it, it, it teaches you the different constructions of uh, for the word God in in the Greek New Testament. And the, the Greek word uh, God appears more than 1,300 times in the New Testament, but this this form doesn't appear in in you know of God's. It doesn't appear in the Greek New Testament, like I said before. All right, so let's get back. <clears throat> Now, uh, so Theu, basically, we saw all the constructions, except for just a couple of them, and I and I told you basically where you can find the other constructions. Okay. All right. Now, um, so let's get back to uh, basically um, Philippians, though. Okay. Uh, Pros. Let me see. Thessalonians over there, and uh, and that's uh, Timothy. So that'll be before that. That's Ephesians, and then the uh, Philippians is right here. Okay, right here. And I have it to the chapter, and that's just the deal. Now you have to understand that the Greek word "marfe" only appears really basically two times in in the New Testament. Once in verse six of this chapter, and once in verse seven. Form of God, form of a slave. After that. It doesn't appear in the Bible, really. It doesn't really appear in the Bible. Now, if you want to count Mark chapter 16, verse 12, well, be my guest, but you're not doing yourself any favors because Jehovah's Witnesses like to use that. We have to teach them. That wasn't really in the original. So they're using, you know, a sword made out of uh, paper because it's not part of the canon it's not part of the it's not part of the scriptures and mark from missouri found that out that's why he had a big fat asterisk in his notes it's not part of the original it's not part of the oldest existing gospel of mark that we have and you see that in the new, in a in a volume entitled new testament greek manuscripts by reuben swanson afforded by the great greek st uh, scholar abruz Mesca. you see when you go to the volume mark mark's gospel because each of these comes yeah, except for probably the smaller uh, epistles, but the the big books um, they come just in one volume. In Mark's Gospel, according to Mark's Gospel, New Testament Greek manuscripts, what well, you see that is wasn't part of the original. He didn't appear in a different form because that wasn't even an original. That that wasn't even an original thing that that Mark wrote. Everybody knows that though. Why is it in our Bible? A lot of people are scared to take stuff out of the Bible. Then, you know, the the new the, the King James only advocates will be witching one and complaining about people taking this away, taking that away, you know. So that's why people have it there. And even in the woman called it adultery, that wasn't there. That wasn't in the original as well. Hello, my wife and my baby. Oh, she's sleeping? No. Uh, she's not feeling good? Maybe her, her, she's teething. Maybe she's teething, my love. I'm doing a Bible study, my love. Maybe she's, maybe she's uh, teething. I mean, that's what it is. See, so anyway, I'll, I'll be done soon, honey, my love. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to be doing this with the baby crying, though. So, I mean, so anyway, it says over here that uh, Jesus was in the form of God. Now, Mark disagrees. Over here it says, who being in very nature God. So it tells you that Jesus was in the form of God. Okay, in the form of God is an marfe theu. It says over here, has an marfe theu huparkon, who being in the form of God. Okay. And that's that big fat ugh that, that Mark was talking about, you know, spelled out Omicron, Upsilon, with the uh, salt breathing, and then, you know, and then, uh, and then he, it looks like an X is not, it's a CH. Harpagman, Harpagnon, and then uh, uh, he, Hegesata, Hegesata, ta, and uh, Enai, uh, Isa, and that's Equalities. With God, and that's the oh, we already saw that that's part of the Theos paradigm. With God, so he was already with God when he didn't consider equality with God a thing to be held on to. It's not what Mark from Missouri says. Let's just face it. Mark from Missouri is wrong. Over here, it tells you that Jesus was in the form of God. It says Christo Jesus right before the word he in Greek, which is has, which is a relative pronoun, is a nominative singular. 
uh, now it's a singular masculine construction. He, referring back to, to, to Jesus. So Jesus was in the form of God. But he didn't say this. He didn't have this attitude. Remember what I said that Mark is talking about, J.W., my friend. He said, well, Jesus didn't want to become like God. That's not what the passage is saying, though. Because it says that he emptied himself. So if he wanted to be become, um, he didn't want to, he didn't, didn't, he did not want to become like God. Well, why did he have to empty himself then? What did he empty himself uh, of if he wasn't even like God? So what, what is what is the emptying all about? What is the kenosis about? Huh? What is that about? He emptied himself of what? Now, this is what I say. Jesus didn't say, well, I'm equal to God, so that way, so I'm not going to come down to earth and serve. He didn't, he didn't have the attitude. He didn't have the attitude of saying, well, I'm equal to God the Father. Why should I go to the planet earth and serve? He, didn't have, he did not have the attitude. He had a servant attitude. He left some kind of glory. To become man. He didn't get rid of his equality with God. He didn't get rid of his attributes. Either his incommunicable attributes. Or his communicable attributes. Well, what, are the communi what are the communicable attributes? Well. God could commu communicate to you and me. Love. Mercy. Those are things that he can share with us. But he cannot share Godhead with us. He cannot share... Okay, things, they're separate, uh, there are distinct attributes that he cannot share with us, though. We cannot be creators, he cannot share that with, you know. So there are things that he can share, communicable attributes, and there are things that he cannot share with us, the incommunicable attributes, his attributes. Alright, let's look at the, 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 um... <clears throat> Let's look at a, at a Greek and linear app, and I don't know why is it like this. This is always in Colossians. And somebody's singing karaoke of all things when I'm doing a Bible study. But anyway, that's the Philippines for you. You understand what I'm saying? So you have Philemon here. You see, you have um, Second Corinthians. And somebody moans and groans because they lost their boyfriend. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay. Uh, don't cry too hard, please. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? My love? What are you going to buy? French fries? Okay, good. I like those golden French fries. She made, my wife made some really good French fries the other day. It tastes like McDonald's. It says over here, Has en marfe teu huparcon. You understand what I mean? Let's look at uh, let's look at a form of huparkom in Peter's uh, uh, address. Not really address, but uh, what he said to the the beggar outside of the gate. Beautiful. Let's go to the Acts of the Apostles. Okay. So there, Acts praxis apostolon. Praxis is Acts, and apostolon means of the apostles, of apostles, actually. Well, let's go to, um, wait a minute, did I go to chapter 2? It's actually um, chapter 3, though. Wait, wait, wait for a second over here. Let me, let me do this. It's actually chapter 3. So let's go there. And it's around verse 6, though. I, I think that's around, I haven't seen this in a while, you know. But let's see. Let's see if I'm right. It says over here, said, a Greek word, apen, by the way. Do you see Peter speaking here? It says over here, de, and that's a post positive. That's to be translated first. However, Peter said, okay, that's a post positive, a little tiny post positive, de, D E, uh, Delta Epsilon. You understand what I'm saying? Peter is Petros. He's the subject of the sentence. He's the one saying something, okay? He's the, he's the subject. But it says over here, Apen, you know, the Holy Spirit says a lot of stuff in the Acts of the Apostles. Don't tell me he's a force. He's speaking all over the place. Okay? I mean, he's speaking all around the place. In many, many chapters. 
As a matter of fact, he appointed deacons, or whatever the case may be, in chapter 20, verse 28. The same Greek word found and recorded for God appointing Jesus, around verse 2, chapter 1 of Hebrews. <clears throat> you don't say that God is a force, well, why do you say the Holy Spirit is a force? Why you why why you so called Jehovah's Witnesses hate the Holy Spirit so much and hate Jesus so much? You're gonna have to bow down, incidentally, um, and, and kiss Jesus' feet before you're sent to hell. Okay, if you die like that, I'm shamed because you're a shinner in the hands of the angry God. Shinners, dirty rotten to the car. Poison of, of, of ass was under their lips. Feet. Swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery is in their ways. And the love of God they have not known. There's no fear of God in their eyes. You see? That's just a deal. Shed, however, it says over here, a pen de Petras. Peter. Silver argurion, okay, argurion, silver and Greek word akai, now pronounced ke, gold. Crucion, crucion, gold, oro in Spanish. Uk, it says over here none, and this is the word coming up, okay. Uh, let me see over here. Uh, let me see. Silver and gold. Where is uh, that word that I'm looking for? Silver and gold. None. It says over here. None there is. There's the word right there. Hoop. Okay. You see that? It's the same Greek word. It's the same Greek word for, um, you know, um, it says 62. 25 62 25 okay it's the same greek word 62 25 let's go to um let's go to silver and gold have i none that's actually what he said so let's go to um and there are other verses that that has this this this, this, this the you know um this word let's go back to philippians philippians chapter 2 you understand what i'm saying and let's just poke the bear right there and just go, you know, just you can go like this all the way to verse 6, though. You know what I mean? Silver and gold, and it says, Hoop our cone. See? 62.25. It's the same Greek, uh, uh, what it says, uh, 52.25. Was it 52.25 over there or 62.25? Let me go back over there. Because over there is 52.25. And it has, so it has to be um, 52.25, right? Let me see. Let me just do that again. Let me just do that again here. Let me go back to the actual the Acts chapter 3. I wish it just kept like multiple memories. Just like Jehovah's Witnesses mem memorial tombs. But anyway. All the tombs are memorial tombs to the Jehovah's Witnesses. Okay, let's see. Let's check this out though. Silver and then uh, Hupar Cone. It should be 52, right? Yeah, no, no, 5225. Five. I'm sorry if I said 6225. It's 5225. It's the same Greek word. Okay, so let's go back. And let's poke the bear here. Go back to Philippians. It's the same Greek word. There's my baby. It's my baby. Praise God. Really, all the children that open up the womb are the Lord's, though, according to Ezekiel chapter 18. You understand what I'm saying? All the children that open up the womb are mine, says God. That's what he says. So this idea that you have you have uh, children, you, they're only loan to you. You understand what I'm saying? That's what that's what my mother uh, uh, loved to say. Why isn't this uh, acting like that? Why is that acting like that? Let, let me just poke the bear again. Okay. Um, okay. All right. So let's get going here. Galatians and Ephesians and uh, yes. Why you just took a bath? Yeah. So that's my stepdaughter again. Now it's working too. <clears throat> okay, is there was there a birthday party you said? Oh. Uh, so it says over here, uh, okay. 
verse 1. So we established that's the same Greek word that's found and recorded several times. Okay, all right. Existing huparkon. Hup means under. It literally means subsisting in your Greek interlinears. You can see that, though. This is this is this is not the true meaning of this. Hoop means uh, hupa means under. Okay, and then it's really a short version of it. it says hoop, and then archon uh, means being. One of the semantic uh, one of the meanings in the semantic range pool. Being and then existing. It says over here, not, ook, what's the big deal with, with, with Mark from Missouri? Why does he say that? I didn't even mention the word not. This is the thing with this Jehovah's Witness. He says, when I mention a lot of Greek, he says, oh, well, you're mentioning a lot of Greek. Well, we speak English, though, you know, English. And then when I, when, and then when, um, you know, and then when I don't give him Greek, then he witches, whines, and whines and complains. Can't have your cake and eat it, too. You can't, you know, complain because I'm giving you Greek, and then you complain when I don't give you it. You can't satisfy the witnesses. You understand what I'm saying? It says over here, okay, all right, okay. I mean, that karaoke is terrible, my God. I mean, <laughs> goodness, he just needs some lessons. So, Huparko is actually the, 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 you know, I exist if you want, right? In lexical form, Huparko. Huparkon is a participle, though. You have to understand that. That's a present active participle. If you don't believe me, poke the bear right over here. I'll tell you, I'll let you know. Let's see. Let's check myself out. It says over here, present participle active. He is God. At the same time that the Apostle Paul is writing this official, he's not my, or the Archangel Michael, he's God. Now, in order for the witnesses to be through, it would have to say, who being in the form of Michael, because he's in the form of Michael now. That's not what it says. It says God. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. That's what I'm saying, right? Existing, huparkon. And then it says not, okay, uh, something to be grasped, okay, Something to be grasped. Let me see over here. Something to be grasped is the Greek word, okay, harpagman. Something to be grasped, or something to be held on to. Okay? That's what it means. He didn't consider equality with God something to be grasped, something to be held on to. It's not only to touch, but to grasp it, to hold on to it. You understand what I'm saying? You're falling off a building, you're grasping for dear life. Grabbing it. Grabbing the ledge. Well, it says that it says over here that Jesus didn't even think of holding on to his equality. The aspect of glory that I keep on saying. Because Jesus prays for the glory back. In chapter 17 of uh, John. Let's go there for a second. Okay? Let's go there for a second. Let's go to John's Gospel. You understand what I mean? Praise the Lord. John chapter 17. Let's go there. John chapter 17. And incidentally, I don't know what Mark from Missouri is trying to pull. He said that, you know, that the same... What? Rice. Oh, who? What's that? Rice. Oh, fries. Oh, my God. Fries. Let me see. That's all for me? Oh. What about you? I get there. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Is that dog here? No. Thank God. Mm, eat my fries. I'm going to enjoy that. Praise God. Okay. <laughs> you understand? Now, John chapter 17, my, my stepdaughter uh, gave me some fries. Some of those golden cheese sort of flavor powder, you know, it's like really good stuff, man. <laughs> okay, let's go to verse 5, okay? It says over here, and now glorify or dox, doxasan, glorify me, it says over here, me, 
Check this out, girls and boys. Glorify me with the glory that you gave me. Does it say that? It doesn't say it. Hi, hon. It's my wife. With the glory, or te, it says over here, the, the glory, te. Is that Marky? With the glory, uh, Doc said, yeah, I'm, I'm making a study. Hopefully, he'll listen to it. Actually, with is really in, in, encapsulized in the word Doc say because it's in a dative case. There's no with here. This is in the, is in the word. One of the key words is with for the dative. You understand what I'm saying? Te, Doc say with the glory, glory. You understand what I'm saying? The glory, uh, mm, that. There's the glory that before or pra, okay, tan kasman, the world, okay, existed with you. You see? That I had with you. Let me see. Well, I think I skipped the word over here. Let me see. My wife is very beautiful. She's confusing me a little bit. <laughs> it says, before... Now, let me see over here. It says over here, with the glory that I had... I mean, she's putting a fry in my mouth. Come on. I, just, uh, I had is... Echan. I had... Does it say that the glory was given to him? Echan. Just in case he wants to check out the semantic range of I had. A 21.92. I had. I had what? I had before pra. Okay. I had um, before the world, Tan Kazman. That's an accused of the case construction existed before the world existed with you and that's um apara and then soy and soy has the with in it in capitalizing the word well i better go now girls and boys you see that he had this glory he 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 emptied himself of that glory that's the glory that he emptied because he's praying for it back now he's not praying for one is he's praying for glory so mark from missouri is wrong. This is Angelo Quinone. It's giving glory to God the Father, to the Lord Jesus Christ, and in the Holy Spirit. Take care, guys. Please subscribe to my channel. <laughs> I sound like those uh, uh, stimulus uh, updaters, right? Right? What are they, honey? The, the stimulus, the stimulus uh, check uh, um, uh, updaters. <laughs> but subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up and give me a nice commentary and I'll, and I'll, I'll get back to you when I can. This is Angelo Quinone. It's giving the glory to God the Father, to the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Thanks, guys. Say bye, hon. Hon. Say bye to the people. Hello, people. Not hello. Goodbye, hon. Oh, God. Get with the program. Ooh, I'm going to see if I can drink that soda. <laughs>